Everybody, the new normal of wearing face masks and social distancing has created some challenges for many of us, especially for people with hearing loss. Masks not only reduce the volume of our voices, they also change the pitch and the dimension, the visual cues we are all used to seeing when we talk to one another. For the deaf of, of hearing impaired, being unable to read lips can be extremely difficult. In the grocery store, I go up to the cashier and I'm like, first thing I say is I'm deaf. Can you please take off your mask so I can see what you're telling me? It's not just the masks, though. We've got plexiglass barriers and spacing, making it harder to communicate, even if you have perfect hearing. It's all adding up to an increase in frustration, anxiety for a lot of folks. Dr. Ahmed Gosalia, a doctor of audiology from West Valley Hearing Center, is here to explain some of the challenges and offer some techniques that perhaps can help. You know, Dr. G, you said we could call you Dr. G uh, in the commercial break. Absolutely. The problem is a lot of us hadn't even thought of this. This is our first time using a mask, so we don't even know that this is happening. Correct. So, you know, it's funny that we're talking about this in the month of May because actually back in 2017, we went down to the city of Los Angeles uh, with uh, Council Member Bob Blumenfield and we did a proclamation for May's Better Hearing Month. So this is a great time to be talking about hearing loss and what masks are doing. So you're absolutely correct. Even with normal hearing and folks with hearing loss, we tend to use a lot of visual cues, which is similar. You know, we, we, we categorize visual cues like lip reading and even emotional reading on people's faces. And if you don't believe me, anytime you've seen a movie dubbed in English from a foreign language, you know something's not quite right because we are subconsciously mm -hmm. lip reading. Um, and so the, the reality is that, you know, there's over 466 million people around the world with hearing loss, and there's approximately 600,000 Angelinos with hearing loss, and it's definitely something that we're very concerned about. So these masks, what ends up happening is there's there's two main things that I wanted to talk about. The first thing is that, of course, as you mentioned, it covers up your, your face so you can't really lip read. Uh, and the second thing is the volume reduction, which you just mentioned as well. There was a recent study done by um, uh, Golden, Weinstein, and Scheiman, which actually demonstrated that there's anywhere up to 12 decibels of reduction in some of the critical speech frequencies where we get more of the S's and T sounds, like the higher frequencies. And it's similar to going from a normal conversational volume down to almost whispering. Dr. Gazalia, you have some great tips, yeah. though, that I think could really help some people. Absolutely. You know, we, uh, we always talk about using that visual cue. So uh, the first thing that I like to talk about is speaking slower. Now, when I say speaking slower, I'm not talking about speaking very slow like this. Generally, I like to talk about enunciating and really making sure that you're breaking your words apart so our brains have the ability to break those words apart in a sentence so enunciation is very important the second thing is rephrasing you know a lot of times when somebody asks you to repeat you repeat the same word back but folks with hearing loss sometimes are missing some of those sounds and so instead of repeating the same sound over and over again that they're missing rephrasing that conversation or rephrasing those words is very important if you have the ability to control background noise it's very important to be able to cut down that background noise you know i always use the example of hearing your refrigerator running well our brains have this innate ability to kind of tune that out well that sometimes gets in the way of even hearing somebody speaking and understanding what they're talking about uh, keeping the light on the speaker you know we talk about this with a lot of our video calls that we've been doing getting a lot of light on them even right now talking to you uh, making sure there's enough light on my face so that you can actually still see those visual cues um, and then of course getting their attention so i like to talk about getting someone's attention first i have normal hearing and sometimes you know i'm a big fan of good morning uh, good day LA, excuse me and uh sometimes i'll be watching it and my wife will say something and uh, i tend to miss what she said because i'm really focused on what i'm watching so getting that person's attention uh and then the last thing which is i think is, is very important is being very patient and you know i think we have this uh thing in our society that we tend to make fun of somebody when they can't hear but we don't do that with other senses and you know with somebody with vision loss or something else so really being patient it's very frustrating for uh the patient or the person who's trying to hear you and then it becomes frustrating for you trying to talk to somebody with hearing loss as well
Yeah, sure, it all makes sense. And maybe, I don't know, speaking with your hands could help emphasize certain points. I don't know if it would be distracting, but I know many people, including myself, speak with my hands. So, Dr. Ghazali, yes, thank Absolutely. you so much for your time. Great, great advice. And we appreciate you watching and being a fan, by the way. Absolutely. Thank you very much. And uh, we're here at West Valley Hearing Center.